Hi, my name is Henning Stahlberg. I'm a physics professor at the EPFL and uh, also professor at the University of Lausanne in the Faculty of Biology and Medicine. In our group, um, we have two projects. We study neurodegeneration and we do method development for neurodegeneration and for electron microscopy. We are in the Coubertron building here in the border between UNIL and EPFL. So we study Parkinson's disease, which is this shaking disease where you can't control your shaking. And this is caused by a black substance in the middle of our brain that loses the black pigments. And instead the cells in this area are filled with so-called Lewy bodies, plaques in the brain. And these plaques start often somewhere in the nose or in the gut, make its way up to the brain stem into the brain. And when they arrive in the substance nigra, then you have the first shaking symptoms and then the plaques spread further and take over the brain and your life expectancy at that point is some 20 years or so in Parkinson's disease and in the end you also become demented because the brain is losing function. Many of these diseases are correlated with the protein alpha synuclein which can be found in these plaques and this protein alpha synuclein um, is able to form fibrils as also many others. So these proteins have a normal function and when they cluster into beta sheet conformation and then form fibrils, needles, um, then this causes lots of different diseases. If the protein tau does this, for example, then this leads to Alzheimer's disease. And alpha-synuclein is related to Parkinson's disease, but the mechanism nobody knows. And also other diseases such as multiple system atrophy. So we use electron microscopes to take pictures of such needles that we make in the lab or that we get from industry partners. We use the electron microscopes of the Dubusche Center for Imaging here in Tuzan for that. And in our group, we then do computer image processing to make a 3D reconstruction of these needles. And these needles are a micrometer long and have a cross section, which is very characteristic here. And this cross section shows us that the needles are composed of this alpha-synuclein protein in a certain conformation. Now, if you look at alpha-synuclein fibrils from lots of different sources, we find different conformations of these fibrils. This and that and that is from our lab and also these here, they're all different. And it could be that one of them leads to Parkinson's disease and another one leads to multiple system atrophy. But the details, how this works and what happens in the brain is not known. So we also look at the human brain directly by taking human brain from autopsy in Amsterdam uh, Wilma van der Berg sends us these tiny millimeter sized brain tissues cross-linked and fixed and we cut it into sections for a light microscope and look for color and we cut neighboring sections and thin slices for electron microscope and then we use the color from the light microscope to find the plaques in the electron microscope and here's for example an electron microscopy image of a slice of a brain of somebody who died from Parkinson's disease and you would never find anything except if you use the light microscope targeting alpha-synuclein by color and then go with to the same location with the electron microscope and focus onto that location with electron tomography and then electron tomography you get a 3d reconstruction of this slice of the Lewy body and can look at all the molecular components at nanometer resolution and we know that this is full of alpha-synuclein but in this case, the patient died from Parkinson's disease. We did not find fibrils, but membrane fragments. The mechanism, what the fibrils did to the brain, and what happened to the membranes is unknown. Multiple system atrophy, for example, is a different disease that also uh, is related to alpha-synuclein fibrils. In that case, we always find fibrils. We also develop methods. We develop methods for cryo-electron microscopy where we look at frozen samples. We want to do coherent electron diffractive imaging. So we illuminate one single protein um, with a convergent electron beam. And due to the convergent beam, we collect a diffraction pattern that shows phase contrast. And we want to apply this to one protein at a time. Um, so it's a conventional cryo-electron microscope, a Titan cryos, the best there is, with a cold field emission gun electron source and auto loader and super nice Falcon 4 camera, but then a probe aberration corrector in the illumination, which here is implemented for the first time in such a machine. So we zoom down to the level of individual proteins 
and then record the diffraction pattern in a funny triangular hop on this, where the first shot as a movie at very high frame rate we use to look at diffractive data, and the next two shots we use to phase these data, similar to tychography. But here we want to not do tychography so that we have a fresh shot each time to get high resolution. And we believe that this is a method to be able to go to higher resolution um, and be able to work at smaller particles than before. Another experiment we want to do with our Titan cryos and electron microscope is to study the interaction between the electron beam and the sample. And in this interaction, we usually have elastically scattered electrons when the electrons fly through the sample. But often you also have inelastically scattered electrons in about 50% of the cases. And if that happens, you have a plethora of secondary effects such as phonons. And phonons only live 160 picoseconds. So if you now have a stroboscopic illumination that sends out a single electron only each nanosecond, we should be able to simply wait until phonons and plasmons and heat have decayed and are calm again before the next electron comes. And by this, we hope that we can cut the beam damage in half which would allow us to use larger numbers of electrons. And that would allow us to go to much higher resolution on much smaller particles. So these two experiments, coherent electron diffractive imaging and stroboscopic electron illumination will be done with this big microscope. And the small one is for testing this, testing remote control and software. And these are the two projects that we do in our lab. We collaborate with a large number of other labs um, from Zurich and Paris and Amsterdam and this is our group. We have several open positions. Please contact me if you are interested in this. And I thank you for your attention.